Welcome to Moving Math and Science. In this video, let's go over how to create a line graph. First question, when do you use a line graph? You use a line graph if you're measuring time. Okay, let's follow these steps. First, let's place the data on the correct axis. You can use dry mix to help you remember this. D stands for dependent. It's also called the responding variable. It goes on the y-axis. And the manipulated variable, also called the independent variable, goes on the x-axis. Okay, once you have that set up, let's go ahead and label the x and y axis. We're going to create a consistent scale. We're going to plot the data, and then we're going to title it. So let's go ahead and look at an example. Okay, here's the data that we're going to plot. It's a fictitious city and it's rainfall for a year each month. Okay, it is over time, so it's a good set of data for a line graph. Let's first identify the dependent and independent variable. The time, the months, will be your independent variable because time depends on nothing. And then the amount of rainfall is the dependent variable. So the first thing we are going to do is go ahead and label our axis. So let me do that. Okay, so here's what we've done. We know that rainfall is the independent variable and it goes on the y axis. Okay, so this is the y axis. And then, can you see that? Okay, and then the dependent variable goes on the x axis. Okay, so next I went ahead and labeled them. I have rainfall in inches and then the month. So the next thing we need to do is create a consistent scale. So let's go over this. Okay, in order to create a consistent scale, you can get a range. The high is 7, the highest number, and the lowest number is 1. So that difference is 6. If you look on my graph, I'm going to go four places. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I know my range is, is at least 6, but 4 doesn't go into 6. So I'm going to round this up to 8. Then I'm going to go 8 divided by 4, and that gives me 2. So each of these spaces will equal 2 inches. Okay, so it's going to be 2, 4, 6, 8. I think that will work pretty well. So this is 2 inches, 4 inches, 6 and 8. Let's write a better Y here. Here's the Y, here's the X. So now what we do is we begin to plot our data. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so let's start plotting. For January, you have 2 inches. So I go January and I go up to 2 and I put a dot. For February, we have 3 inches. February is here, halfway in between 2 and 4 is that. Let's do one more and then I'll speed. For March, we have 4 inches. So March goes up to 4. Okay. Okay, so here's what it looked like after I plotted all this. And then I just draw a line to connect the dots. And you can see now our data table is a visual picture. And you can look for trends or what's happening. You can see that, uh, one, there's not, it's kind of haphazard. And um, as you approach the summer, the it's rainiest in the summer, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, it's now a visual picture. And then the last thing we need to do is title it. And I would probably title this um, rainfall, monthly rainfall. And it's a fictitious city, so I'm going to say for city X. Okay, so in summary, here's what I did. I placed the independent variable on the X axis. I labeled it. I put the dependent variable on the Y axis and labeled it. I figured out a consistent scale. Notice that it is going up by 2 each time. I plotted all of my data from my data table. I connected the dots 
gave it a title. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching, and remember, kindness multiplies kindness. Be kind to someone today.